This video is going to talk about the recursive and explicit formulas for finding Fibonacci numbers and also powers of phi. The recursive formula we've already discussed, but let's talk about it a little bit more so we can compare it to the explicit formula. To have a recursive formula for the Fibonacci number, we need two seeds. The seeds are f sub 1 is 1 and f sub 2 is 1. Then we need the recursive formula which says to find the next Fibonacci number you take the Fibonacci number that you know and add the one before that. So to get, to get the next Fibonacci number you have to add the two previous. So if n is 11 we can find the 12th n plus 1, 11 plus 1, Fibonacci number by adding the 11th Fibonacci number to the 10th Fibonacci number. So by adding the 10th Fibonacci number and the 11th Fibonacci number we get f sub 12 is 144. Now the problem with this recursive formula is that in order to figure out the 12th Fibonacci number you have to know all the preceding Fibonacci numbers. Now let's look at this explicit formula. This looks a little scary but I think you can deal with it. In your textbook it shows you a much simplified version that if you round off your answer from the calculator you will get the correct Fibonacci number and you're allowed to use that on your test but I'm not going to explain it in the video. You'll have to read your text to learn that. The way I'm going to type this in my calculator is I'm going to save that multiply by 1 over square root of 5 until the end and just divide by the square root of 5. So starting with this piece, I have an open parenthesis for this open parenthesis. And then because of the fraction and fraction piece, I'm going to need some parentheses around that. So another open parenthesis, and then 1 plus square root of 5. Now depending on your calculator, some calculators will draw a little open light, a open parenthesis, and you'll type in the 5. You must put in that other closed parenthesis if that's your kind some calculators give you a little box and you just put the 5 in it then get outside the box to put the closed parenthesis for the numerator part of that fraction. So it just depends on which kind of calculator you have. Then you need to divide by 2 for the denominator then close the parenthesis and you need to do to the exponent of n. And I, let's just do 12. We'll find the 12th Fibonacci number. So to find the 12th Fibonacci number, n is going to be 12. Now you need to subtract the other fraction and it's done the exact same way except for with a minus sign instead an open parenthesis, open parenthesis for the numerator, 1 minus square root of 5. If you need to close parenthesis for your calculator be sure and put it in. And then divide by 2, close the parentheses around the fraction and exponent of 12. Uh, some of you don't have a caret button. You may have an x to the y button on your calculator instead of a caret for your exponent. Alright, at this point hit enter or equals then hit divide by the square root of 5 equals and that should give you 144 if you've done it correctly. Powers of phi. Let's review where part of where we found phi. We figured out that phi was equal to 1 plus 1 over phi. 
And then we multiplied both sides of the equation by phi to get phi squared was equal to phi plus 1. Well, what I want to do is I want to be able to come up with these powers of phi. I want to be able to find what is phi cubed, what is phi to the fourth, and what is phi to the fifth and so on. So let's just see phi squared times phi is going to be phi cubed. But whatever I do to one side of the equation I need to do to the other side of the equation. So now I have phi cubed, distribute that phi. That's phi squared plus a phi. But phi squared we already figured out was 1 phi plus a 1. That's what phi squared is. And then we have this other phi that's tacked on there. So phi cubed, adding like terms, is 2 phi plus 1. Phi cubed is 2 phi plus 1. So let's do the same thing again to find phi to the fourth. Phi cubed times phi is going to be phi to the fourth. But I need to multiply both sides of the equation by phi. So that's going to give me phi to the fourth is 2 phi squared plus a phi. But phi squared is phi plus 1. Now, distribute the 2, that's 2 phi plus 2, plus that other phi. So phi to the 4 is 3 phi plus 2. Let's do this one more time. Multiply this side by a phi, so that I have phi to the 5th. And multiply this side by phi and distribute 3 phi squared plus 2 phi. But remember phi squared is phi plus 1. Distribute 3 phi plus 3 plus 2 phi. So phi to the fifth is equal to five phi plus three. Pause the video for just a minute and look at these numbers and see if you can figure out some kind of a pattern that goes with those numbers. All right, many of you have noticed now that these are just Fibonacci numbers. 1, 2, 3. Let's look at this one. 3 is the fourth Fibonacci number. So I've got the fourth Fibonacci number times phi plus 2, which is the third Fibonacci number. And all of that is going to equal phi to the fourth. Let's look at phi to the fifth the same way. Phi to the fifth is going to equal the fifth Fibonacci number times phi. Notice. 5 is f sub 5, plus the fourth Fibonacci number, f sub 4. Now when we look at n, notice that matches here. So phi to the nth is going to equal the nth Fibonacci number times phi 
plus another Fibonacci number. Well, how are you going to make sure and get, let's see, I need F sub 4, but I'm starting with a 5. And I need F sub 3, but I'm starting with a 4. It looks like that's going to be F sub n minus 1. So the formula for powers of phi, phi to the nth power is going to equal the nth Fibonacci number times phi plus the Fibonacci number before that. 